So you found your old childhood game draw. Game draw. So you found. So you found your old childhood Game Boy sitting in a drawer. In this video, we're going to go through why it won't turn on, starting with the basics, and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll be able to play your childhood Tetris game or your Pokemon. So let's get started. First thing we're going to look at is the battery contacts. So the first thing we're going to do is, if you're lucky enough to have a power pack, just try the power pack and see if that will turn on. And if it turns on with the power pack, you'll know the problem lies with, with the battery terminals. So we'll put some batteries in and we'll see what happens. Now it goes without saying that you should be using new batteries to make sure that they're fully charged up. Okay, new batteries, we've got no power. So don't panic, give your batteries a bit of a roll to make sure that they've got good contact with the battery terminals and try again. No power. So the next thing is to check the terminals for any signs of corrosion or dirt. Now these ones are obviously quite good because it's a it's a working console. If there's any signs of corrosion on here, these need to be cleaned off. And the best thing to clean the corrosion off is some white vinegar, followed by some IPA. And after cleaning, you might find that the Game Boy comes on. There you go, don't worry about that black bar. It'll only display the Nintendo logo if there's a game cartridge in. If the console still isn't powering on and you've got some nice clean battery terminals we'll have to open it up and have a look at the power switch inside now the power switch on the outside that's not the switch it's just a cover so it's no good pouring anything in there trying to clean the switch because you're not going to get to it you've got to open the console to clean the switch properly and these are tri-wing screws so you will need a tri-wing screwdriver to open this up. Now this console's been opened before and for some reason it's got six crosshead screws in. So I've taken out the six screws and be careful because there's a, a ribbon cable attaching the top screen. So just gently pull that out, pull that down, pull it out. There are two screws here and here holding in the main board and there are two screws at the bottom holding in the headphone jack as you can see the switch that you see on top is just a cover and it moves the switch inside the console so pop some IPA in the switch and give it a give it a good clean put the console back together and try that and try again no power okay so so now we're going to check for continuity from the positive battery terminal up towards the switch up here so if we zoom in a bit we check those solder points to make sure that they're good Make sure that this part is securely soldered here. Likewise with the the negative terminal. Make sure you've got a good connection between the terminal itself and the the main board. So I'm going to trace this positive from the battery terminal. Comes up this via behind the shield and it comes to this point on the DC jack so if I put my multimeter on the positive battery terminal it comes to here while there's no DC jack in it jumps across to this one yes and then it goes up follow the trace to this point 
on the back of the switch. So that's a connection direct from the battery terminal all the way up to this solder point here. So if I was to put my batteries in, I would have 6 volts or almost 6 volts all the way up to here on the back of the switch. If you turn the switch on, in the on position, it connects this point to this point. So now I have a connection all the way from the battery terminal to this point, which is now going into the circuit board for the rest of the machine. So with the switch on, I should have continuity between these two points. With the switch off, I lose continuity. So once again, from the positive on the battery terminal, all the way up, it comes up here, around here, to this point. And then if there's no DC jack in, it comes to here, and then it goes up to here. And if the switch is in the on position, it jumps across to here. That's the positive power circuit up from the battery terminal to the DC jack. To the switch and through the switch. As a note, if you do put the DC jack in, so we're on a external power supply now, it breaks the contact between these two points and that's to stop the battery providing power while the DC jack is plugged in. So you lose the connection from the battery terminal all the way up to the switch if you have the DC jack in. If this DC jack is faulty and full of corrosion, the contact between these two points might be broken, even if there's no DC jack in. So if you've got nothing in here, but you haven't got continuity between these two points, your DC jack is faulty or corroded and it needs to be replaced. So all, all we've done is make sure your battery terminals are nice and clean. You can buy replacement terminals like this and they just, these ones, these just push out like so and you put a new one in. If you want to do the job properly you would take all three of these out and soak them in vinegar to remove any corrosion before putting them back in. If the silver plating has been eaten away, you will have to replace them with uh, with an aftermarket one. So make sure that these are all nice and clean with some vinegar and IPA, and then use a multimeter to trace for continuity up through the DC jack, through the DC jack to the switch, and turn the switch on, and make sure that your switch is working. If the switch is dirty, again, pop a little bit of vinegar or IPA in the top. If you want to make sure that the switch is going to last, you can buy a product called Deoxit, which you can just drop into the switch, and you can see that's great for all types of electrical connections. It removes oxidation, improves contact, protects surfaces, and improves reliability. So that's an option if you want to make sure that your Game Boy is going to be working for a long time. So I hope that's helped. If your Game Boy does not turn on, I've gone through the basics. Um, Don't forget, before you put the screws back in, like I've just done, don't forget to put your power switch back in.
lost a screw. I've lost a screw, and if I can't find it, I'm going to have to assume that it's inside the bloody thing. Am I still recording? Oh, for God's sake. Well, I found me missing screw. There it is there. I actually worked on this console yesterday. This was a... It came to me as faulty for around £32. And it was a problem with the corrosion on one of these battery terminals. And it did turn on. But it had some some missing lines on the screen. Which I managed to repair. Which is quite a simple enough thing to do. But unfortunately I recorded the whole video with no audio. So it didn't make a video. But this is the console working fine now. And we'll pop the game in. And as you can see, it's spot on. So thank you for watching. I hope the information on tracing the power from the battery terminal up to the switch comes in, comes in handy for someone. And you can fix your old Game Boy. So if you like this video, please, if you can give us a like and perhaps subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.